Well, I am a little behind, just to say, but I did finish chapter three, and it was a very interesting chapter. I'm amazed at how people have to kind of pick on Joseph. And instead of just leaving things be, they have to throw things that he does incorrectly in his face. And of course, that was falling in the river. And, uh, trying to save Joseph, uh, trying to save, uh, our narrator, buddy, Jack. But the bus and Jack's father wanting the boys to ride the bus. And of course, that had its own complications, didn't it? And that bus driver, I don't like that bus driver very much. I'm not sure what you're thinking about him, but he he gets into everybody's business and he doesn't need to. Haskell. And I think um, Jack's father knows him because he said, I guess you didn't hear everything, Haskell. So maybe they're the same age and they went to school together. I don't know. I just kind of created that in my mind as I'm thinking. Um, and Joseph sitting in the back with his book. And of course, the kids harass Jack. And, you know, I won't talk about the body parts that they're talking about, but when you fall in the river and it's freezing and, and they're telling him not to hang out with Joseph. And of course, Jack's not going to listen to them anyway, but they're telling Jack about targeting Joseph, that they have a plan. And I don't understand why they have to get involved and bully and get involved in Jack's space, but it, it's clearly happening. Um, and then we have Jay Perkins. And Jay Perkins is going, is telling everyone, it means Jay Perkins is telling everyone how he's going to bust your foster brother up. John nodded. Psycho school better start looking pretty good, he said. So they're definitely targeting um, Joseph. And Jack pushes his way towards the back, even though he wasn't going to in the first place after having all these things happen with these boys as he's trying to get on the bus and get to the back. And then he says, move over. I said, he looked at me a long time, then he slid over. That's how we rode, rode the bus the rest of the way. Um, and then we have Mr. Dolney waiting for Joseph and kind of grabbing at him. And you know, you kind of can't touch Joseph because when somebody it has been physically abused, you know, different people react different ways. So you never put your hands on someone without them kind of giving permission for that. Um, and then PE class, we have Coach Switek yelling at Joseph about the river incident, and he's aware these boys are targeting Joseph. He keeps them separate, but clearly Jack is worried about it. Then that whole office duty thing, I don't understand about the office duty. You go into office duty, you just have to sit there and be ready. So Joseph takes out a book he's reading, and nope, he's not allowed to do that. Mr. Canton said he's got to be ready to, you know, do whatever job comes up. And of course, there's really not any jobs that are coming up. So I find that interesting. And Mrs. Holloway sees Joseph pulling out a book. And of course, Mr. Canton yells at him about it. But she sees a different Joseph when he pulls out that book. And they walk off down the hall together on the way to class. And she says, I, um, I could hear his breathing. Joseph, we've, oh, 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 yeah, that's the part I wanted to get to. So Joseph is putting, um, the book in his, in his, uh, backpack and Mrs. Holloway is watching from afar and being responsible, Mr. Canton says, means being ready to do what you're supposed to do, be doing, even if no one is watching or making you do it. Do you boys understand that? I nodded. I was supposed to. Joseph was supposed to nod too, but he didn't. Do you understand that, Mr. Brooke? Joseph stood. I have to get to class, he said. Mr. Canton reached for him. Joseph dropped his pack and immediately his back was against the wall and his hands up. 
the way he was breathing. Don't touch him, I whispered. Please, please don't touch him. Mr. Candon looked at me, then back at Joseph. So you better get to class, he said. Um, that just, anybody who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm not saying Joseph does, but I imagine he could be suffering from that PTSD. Um, if you've been abused, if you had events happen to you in the past, any small triggers, like somebody even getting too close to you, can can cause an over, what most people think of as an over reaction or an over response. It was amazing. To, I got a picture of it in my mind. And uh, let's see. They walk past the church. No, they're driving past the church. He's looking out at the church. And then he says, he's looking out at the, I'm going to read that. That was Rosie moaning in the background, if you heard that. Um, I didn't see him again that day until after school when I found him at the back of the bus where he where it was super hot and the windows all fogged. He had propped up Octavian nothing, and he only stopped reading when we drove past Old First Congressional, then the church. Then he rubbed the fog off the windows and watched the snow pelt the church and gather beneath the hems of its white skirts. He turned around to see it out of the back window. What? I said. He looked at me, just thinking about what it would have been like, he said. I looked behind us at the church. What? Nothing, he said. Then back to Octavian, nothing. Um, oh, and then they go in the barn and we see Joseph has really fallen into the whole milking thing with Dahlia and he he has a, a, a connection to her clearly and Joseph knows that something's bothering Jack and he can tell and how can he tell because Dahlia's stamping her foot and Joseph is already so in tuned with the way the cows are and I'm sorry uh, Rosie is the cow that he's with, and Dahlia is the cow that that um, Jack is is milking. And he's so in tune with the animals now to know their reactions when things, when the energy isn't right, when things aren't feeling right. So Jack tells him about those boys um, targeting him, and he doesn't seem to worry too much. I don't think I don't think Joseph worries. And the other piece, when when Jack's dad cleared off the little pond and they were ice skating, and then you get a vision of Joseph ice skating and, and his eyes are closed, and Jack wonders if Maddie, if he's in his mind with Maddie. And then we end the chapter. Got to get there. We end the chapter. Until he slid into the bank by the three of us and the firelight lit him and his face was so tight and my mother said what mothers are supposed to say you're a beautiful skater joseph my father stood and kicked the flaming sticks together and threw another couple of spits splits on and joseph looked at me and then at my parents and he said i have to see jupiter will you help me my parents looked at him and my mother stood and she said joseph you and he said i have to see her and my father said you know we and then under the sharp stars and the silver moon and glowing jupiter joseph told us everything everything wow how powerful is that what a powerful chapter and i now i feel really badly i didn't keep up with this book because i've been so busy with books for my classes but I'm going to go right into chapter four because now they've hooked me. But um, what a cool book. What a cool book. All right. I hope you're enjoying it. And if you want to post something in comments or post a video response, you could certainly do that. I will do my best to get back on back on track here. I hope you're enjoying the book. I hope you're reading it. And if you took a break like I did, get back to it because it's it's awesome.